spending theft of my dollars by our current Congress and administration. So federal government, who probably isn't here today, listen up. I'm just going to make 10 points for you. Number one, Congress has abandoned the Constitution and wouldn't recognize it if it fell in their lap and called them daddy. Yes. Bind them to the Constitution again. That's what we need to do and force them to get it right. And the other thing that I find very disturbing about Congress and probably the administration is they have become to assume the coloration of a monarchy, which is what our forefathers and those patriots gave their best blood to get out from under. Yes! And one of the first steps we need to take to start getting things right is to recognize that the Constitution establishes our monetary standard as precious metal, gold, the gold standard, but Congress has given us instead an unconstitutional and privately owned Federal Reserve Bank. If we continue to go, <laughs> if we continue to go along with that, the government will continue to flood the market with paper, devalue our dollar, and drown us in inflation. Why? By artificially controlling the money supply, they control we, the people. That is their intent. Congress must abolish the Federal Reserve System. Yeah. Number three. And this is a pet peeve of mine. Global warming is a decoy designed to create panic and keep us tethered to the government. Most of us are not, by nat nature, polluters and wouldn't know a carbon footprint if it fell on our lap and called us a daddy. Neither would Congress or the current administration. Number four, stop apologizing for America's Judeo-Christian yeah. heritage. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bow to anyone, especially, especially someone who is holding us hostage to oil. Number five, protect our national sovereignty. America first and get out of the UN. Number six, respect and acknowledge our state sovereignty and stop bribing us with federal money which is just tax dollars under a different name. Federal government, you did not create the states. The states and we the people created you. Oh yeah, right up to my mouth. <laughs> Number seven, forget bailouts and stimulus money. You fooled a lot of us, but most of us know you're just buying votes and solidifying the power that you have conscripted outside the Constitution. Number eight, and to me this may be the most important one, keep your hands off my kids. I don't know what to do with dysfunctional parents, but I'm functional. I will train up my child in the way he should go, and I don't need Head Start preschool or kindergarten to do it. And I certainly don't need government to tell me how, when, or where. The Secretary of Education cabinet post should be abolished. Up to my mouth, okay. Number nine, we're getting down. And my children and grandchildren, the products of traditional marriage, breathed life at the moment of conception. And my responsibility for those lives began at precisely that same moment. So federal government, stop killing our children. 
And just to end on a more modest note for number 10, secure our borders. And come and get your killer wolves. That was for me in my district. <laughs> anyway, what would I finally say to the Congress of the United States? And you're partially to blame because I'm sure some of you voted for them. I know I did. Wake up and read the Constitution. Yes! I tremble for my country and I weep for my children. So I will conclude with a quote from Samuel Adams, one of the firebrands of the original Tea Party. It does not require a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen to set brush fires in people's minds. So come on, baby, and light my fire. Thank you, Representative Lenore Hardy Barrett. One of the fundamental challenges we face as a government is entitlement spending, the involuntary transfer of...